Good evening and welcome to St. Luke AME Church located in Opelika, Alabama. I am Pastor Monique Summers and we are delighted that you have joined us tonight for our Advent meditation. On tonight, we are using our meditation guidebook that is entitled Advent Prophecy and Expectation, a Guide for Meditation and Action. This book was published by the AME Church with various presenters who wrote the nightly devotions that we are using. And they are from the AME Church, as well as the AME Zion and the Christian Methodist Church. And so we are excited on tonight for what we are about to witness in the way of Sister Jacqueline Jones, who will come to us in her own way with our Advent meditation. We ask that you open your eyes and open your hearts and your mind to receive her. She is our presenter for tonight for November 29th. She is Chaplain Jackie Jones with the Auburn Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And so at this time, we will not prolong the time, but we will yield at this time so that she can come in her own way with our devotion on tonight. Sister Jackie, it's in your hands. Thank you, Pastor Summers. Thank you everyone for joining. Good evening to you. I appreciate this opportunity for St. Luke to give me this opportunity to share this devotion with you. I thank you, Sarah Burton, if you're on, Elaine Burton, if you're on. Thank you for trusting me with this assignment. I was surprised from just two nights ago when I got the call, but I, whenever someone calls and asks me to minister or say something on behalf of the Lord, I'm always glad to do that. And I'm also glad to be here representing Auburn Alumni Chapter Delta Sigma Theta. I understand that this is the week that we are representing uh, sororities and fraternity. So thank you for allowing Auburn alumni to be represented tonight. For those of you who do not know me, I am Jacqueline Williams Jones, been a member of the Auburn alumni chapter for 36 years now. I joined in 1986. I am married to Pastor Lenoris Jones, who is a pastor at the Clover Hill Baptist Church in Lowndes County, Alabama, Fort Deposit. If you've ever gone to the beach and stopped at Precious Pecans, that's our exit. I am the mother of two children. I have a daughter, two grown children, a daughter, Alana, and a son, Lenoris Jr. So as the pastor said, we will not prolong the time. I just want to dive into the word and thank everyone for joining us. So let us say a quick word of prayer, and I will be using some of the information from the guidebook, but supplementing it as well. Let us bow our heads with a quick word of prayer. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we come to you. We thank you for this opportunity to minister your word and to just in this glorious season, this season of Jesus Christ's birth, Father. We want to just honor you in everything that we say, everything that we do tonight, every song, every word that is spoken, Father. Father, we pray tonight that this be of all of you and none of, none of me, Father. We pray that you pour your Holy Spirit into me right now so that I can minister what you would have me to minister and only what you would have me to minister in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So I did take the title that Pastor Summers provided, The Work of the Holy Spirit. So we will be talking about the Holy Spirit throughout tonight. It is probably, I'm not sure how long I'm going to be. It's a, a short devotion, but I've added to it. But we're going to start at John chapter 14, verses 16 through 19. And I'm sure you have heard these scriptures before. Uh, starts out in chapter 14, verse 16 9, through 19. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the, that is the spirit of truth whom in the world cannot receive, because it does not, it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you. And you will and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you, and after a little while, the world will no longer see me, 
but you will see me because I live in you also. John chapter 14, verses 26 and 27. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, and my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled nor do you be afraid. Amen. So I just wanted to talk just a little bit about the Holy Spirit being our helper and how Jesus Christ was preparing the disciples for when he was going to ascend. Jesus continued to prepare the, the disciples for what was ahead of them, just like he does with us today. When things are ahead of us, we, we have an ear to, to hear what the Spirit is saying. He will prepare us. Jesus anticipated the disciples' grief at his betrayal and the death and then his ascension to the Father. Life would certainly be changing for the disciples uh, who had lived intimately with him, walked with him, ministered with him, ate with him. While their experiences with Jesus would change, Jesus longed for them to understand that he would still be with them, just like he is with us today. Instead of dwelling with them through the physical being, his physical body, Jesus would dwell with them through his Holy Spirit, just like he does with us today. So what can we say about the Holy Spirit? We can say that he is truly our helper. We can say that the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. We can say the Holy Spirit convinces the world of righteousness and judgment. Jesus knew that, disciples, that the disciples were going to be bewildered and stricken with grief. All they knew that they were going to lose Jesus. They didn't understand anything other than that. But he told them that at the end, this would be best for all, best for them if he went away the Holy Spirit, the helper, would come. When he was in the body, he could not be everywhere. He could only be one place. If he's with them, he could be no place else. And it was the case of, them, of their greetings and their farewells. You know, I'm here now with you, but yet when, I, when I'm gone, I can't, I can't be with you in the natural. But when he was in the body, he could not reach their minds and their hearts and their consciousness everywhere. He was confined by limitations, by place and by time. But there are no limitations in the spirit. Everywhere a person goes, the spirit is with them. Jesus refers to the spirit once again as the helper. The helper will enable the disciples to remember the words that, that Jesus perfectly taught. As his apostles, these men would be entrusted with writing scriptures, writing the Bible. They would, they would not do it through not having any power, but they needed that endued power from the Holy Spirit to work with them, with, to work within them to get this work done. Instead of being taught by Jesus, the men now were being taught by the Holy Spirit. These are the same men that would testify of who Jesus was and what he did. And this is the same spirit that helps us to testify for, for, for what Jesus does and what he does, what he does and where he lives, because he lives on the inside of us. Just as the disciples had to learn to trust that Jesus was doing the right thing by going away, we have to trust the same way. When Jesus ministers to us, tells us something, we just have to trust that he knows best. You know the old saying that mother knows best? Yes, Jesus knows best. Through the power of the Holy Ghost, the disciples became co-workers with, with God. They were able to build the kingdom of God through witnesses and testimony. 
their work was done through the Holy Spirit and not just their flesh. When, when Jesus was walking here on the earth, they were doing work with their flesh. They were feeding the hungry. They were doing things with their flesh, but now they are working with the spirit. Like the disciples who were powerless without the spirit, we too are powerless without the spirit. The power and the illumination will come to the disciples as they learn to, the, to surrender all and trust the helper. Just like today, we have to learn to surrender all and trust the helper. One of the Holy Spirit's main purpose is to unveil, unveil Jesus to us. To paint a portrait of how divine he is. So, John, again, represents Jesus in the Bible as our helper. And power comes from God. Power to believe, power to testify, power to obey. The triune God models this authority. The triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father sent the Son the Son perfectly obeyed the Father, and now the Father and the Son will send the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal truth to us here on the earth as he bears witnesses to our spirit, just as Jesus did back on earth. There is a perfect unity and submission with the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Through the Holy Spirit's work, within the life of a, of a believer, there can be an experience of unity through submission. God is with you. God is with us. He will remain with us through the end of time. Not only is he with you, but he will help you with, through every situation with the Holy Spirit. Your invitation is to just receive, surrender, and just obey. So I want you to think about something for just a moment. How are you experiencing the Holy Spirit as your helper? Just a moment, think about that. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit a gift who will guide us, lead us, and empower us. Yet many believers don't experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So who is the Holy Spirit? I'm glad you asked. He is a supernatural helper, one who comes alongside to exhort, to comfort, to encourage, and to advocate. The Holy Spirit could testify on our behalf and assist us with any case. Remember when the old folks used to say he's a doctor in a sick room and a lawyer in a courtroom? Yes, the Holy Spirit is exactly what he says he is. He can advocate for us, encourage us, comfort us during times of, of, of sadness. He is a supernatural helper. He is a supernatural indwelling. This is a great promise. Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit of truth who would actually live on the inside of believers and be with us forever. The word declares that he would not leave us or forsake us. What a promise, and he keeps it daily. He is a supernatural life. Jesus promised, because I live, you live also. And one of my favorite songs, and I was listening to it just a little while ago, is Because He Lives. Because He Lives, we can face tomorrow. Because He Lives, all fear is gone. And because He Lives, we know who holds the future. Jesus is a supernatural life. He is a supernatural teacher. The word declares, you have an unction from the Holy One by which you know all things. Have you ever had to take a test while you were in school or had to do something at work that you just didn't know how to do it, but somehow you got it done? I mean, it happens to me almost daily. And uh, I love to say, just look at God. I can't take credit for it because I recognize that he is teaching me daily. 
So he is a supernatural teacher. The Holy Spirit renews and strengthens. Have you ever been tired physically, mentally, and thought you just didn't know how you were going to make it? I hear people say this often now, I'm tired. And I don't know whether it's COVID, the fact that we've been locked away for two and a half years, we, we hadn't been with family much, we hadn't been able to get out. But I hear people say all the time, I'm tired. And I kind of caught myself saying that just this morning, who I'm tired. But I, I quickly just pull that back in because I remember that God is a God of restoration. You say that you're tired and asking for strength, guess what he'll give you? He'll give you strength. Just a few months ago, I was exhausted, it seems like, just, just going and going and going. I'm busy with every part of my life. And I asked God, I said, God, I need a second win. And you know what he did? Somehow he managed to give me a second win and I was able to just get through that situation at that time. But we have to trust him. We have to turn our problems and our issues over to him. Yes, turn that boss over to him. I had to do it. Turn those children over to him. Because we cannot do it by ourselves. We have got to have our helper. Yes, the Holy Spirit renews and strengthens. The Holy Spirit is a supernatural peace. Jesus promised the disciples that the Spirit would grant them peace. This is the same peace that, that we experience today. 2,000 years later, the peace that he promised the disciples. Remember, the scripture tells us he would give us peace that passes all understanding. And I just want to say a quick prayer for those of us who may be going through um, some times where we, need, we may need our strength renewed. We may need peace. We may need him to teach us. We may need him to help us. Uh, whatever we need, he is that. Remember I said earlier, he's a lawyer in a courtroom, a doctor in a sick room. He's everything that you need. And that Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us, thank you, Lord, for, for knowing that you go away, you needed to leave us a comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fall fresh on us. Lord, thank you for being our helper, our indwelling spirit, our teacher, our peace, our second wind. Thank you, Father, for giving us that strength, Father, when we feel like we're tired and we just don't know how we're going to make it. Oh, Father, we just want to bless your name because many are tired, tired from the past two years of COVID separation, jobs, and I don't know what they're tired from or what we are tired from, but Father, we do recognize it's probably a trick of the enemy, but we ask Holy Spirit that you renew us, that you refresh us, that you strengthen us, and Holy Spirit, fall fresh on us. Holy Spirit, rain down in Jesus' name. Amen. So I say everybody that's on this call, just close your eyes and listen to the music. Ask the Holy Spirit to rain down. Rain down on the music. Just take this moment to worship. If you need to, lift your hands, bow your head. Holy Spirit, rain down.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody, for he is worthy to be praised. We give God honor and praise for the word of God that has gone forth tonight through our uh, sister Jackie Jones, the chaplain for the Auburn Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. We have truly been touched by this uh, Advent devotion on tonight. We thank you again for accepting the invitation to come and share with us regarding the works of the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that the devotion said is that the Holy Spirit is our helper. And so we thank you for making that very clear on tonight in this season of preparation that you have uh, told us and reminded us of who the Holy Spirit is, who he is in the life of the believers. And so we give God praise on tonight. At this time, I would like to pause um, and acknowledge the presence of my presiding elder, the Reverend Dr. Letitia Watford the presiding elder of the Tuskegee District of the Northeast Alabama Conference, Ninth Episcopal District. Elder, uh, at this time I yield if you would like to greet us. Um, if not, we do want to acknowledge your presence on tonight and our bishop in his absence, uh, Bishop Harry L. Seawright and Supervisor, Reverend Sharita Moon Seawright for their love and support. Elder Thank you very much. Thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to greet you all in the joy of Jesus and to say to our presenter tonight, you hit a home run, my sister. You taught that lesson and we truly are the better for it. I am particularly moved by your use of media in the sense of the music that you attach to that teaching. Um, for those of us who were, we were able to see each other praising and worshiping God as a result of your ministry. And again, we just thank you so much for what you offered us tonight. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Elder, uh, for greeting us on tonight. And we thank all of you who thought it not robbery to join us for this second night of Advent meditation as we prepare for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the presence of Reverend Lenoris Jones Sr., who I believe is the uh, husband of our speaker on tonight. So we greet you also, sir, in the joy of Jesus. At this time, before we dismiss from this Advent celebration on tonight, uh, we would like to give everyone who is on the call the opportunity to share uh, by giving an Advent offering, a free will offering. If you choose to do so, it is on the screen. Um, you can do so by mail to St. Luke AME Church, uh, P.O. Box 4138, Opelika, Alabama 36803. You can also find us on GiveLify. Just search for St. Luke AME Church, Opelika, Alabama. And then you may also give by way of cash app to dollar sign, St. Luke Opelika, that's S-T-L-U-K-E-O-P-E-L-I-K-A. -E -E those are the three ways that you can give. And those who are on Zoom, we have posted that information in the chat uh, for your convenience. Now on tomorrow night, we do want to extend an invitation for you to come back and join us on tomorrow night um, this week, we are highlighting our sororities, and tomorrow night, our presenter will be Alicia Lyles. She's the president of the Psi Gamma Zeta Auburn Chapter Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, and she will be with us sharing on tomorrow night. So we extend the invitation for all of you to come back, and please invite others to join. At this time, we will prepare to dismiss. However, once this call, uh, the um, recording has stopped with the Facebook, those who would like to greet our speaker, there'll be a time of fellowship that you can do so. And so we uh, admonish you to just stay on briefly so that we can greet her and give her our love. Again, thank you, Jacqueline Jones, uh, for your support on tonight and for presenting for us. 
At this time, we will have our closing prayer. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, come. Fall fresh on us. For God, we realize where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so on tonight, God, we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you all again for joining us. At this time, we will close out um, with the remainder of the song and it will phase us out. And then we will open all lines so that we can greet our presenter on tonight. Yeah.